Hey hey, Marcus House with you here and today we are talking about the recent developments and news regarding SpaceX's massive pace of innovation with the Starhopper and Starship prototypes. Now just last week we saw some very beautiful footage from a local amateur photographer Michael Tapes who captured some beautiful drone footage at SpaceX's Florida Starship facility. Now this footage is from the 9th of July and we can really see just how much progress is being made here on the Starship prototype. As soon as I watched this video I couldn't help but be amazed at the speed of development that we've seen here. Now just think back to the start of this year when Elon tweeted out the first prototype image of this initial version of the Starhopper. Now in only the space of six months or so we have gone from this basic mock design to having multiple versions of the Starhopper and Starship prototypes being actively worked on. Now back in April we did catch a glimpse and I do mean a glimpse of the tethered hop test being conducted. Since then however there has been a great deal of development and iteration on the Raptor engine itself which has obviously been a huge technical challenge given that the Raptor is a full flow stage combustion cycle engine fueled with liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Now this engine is not only incredibly complex to design but it is also an engine type that has never actually flown. The only other full flow stage combustion cycle engines that have ever been created were only ever used in testing environments. One of those of course being the Russian RD-270 way back in 1962. Now that engine from memory was cancelled while still having combustion instability problems. So that never left the ground. Now the Raptor on the other hand looks to have solved a number of recent technical issues as we've learned from Elon Musk over the last several weeks. On June 24th he tweeted that the Raptor liberated its oxygen turbine stator so we need to update the design and replace some parts. Production is ramping exponentially though. The SN6 version of the engine is almost done. Now this is all really good news of course but then two weeks later Elon tweeted again saying that there has been exciting progress in Boca Chica. The Starhopper is almost ready to hover. Based on tonight's test it looks like the 600Hz Raptor vibration problem is fixed. Now just to imagine that an engine of this complexity can have such rapid prototypes churning out is pretty astounding. The engine was quickly sent south to the Starhopper at Boca Chica arriving on the 11th of July to be installed just the next day. It was then of course that we saw some footage of the Raptor gimbal systems here. Now this engine is quite large in comparison to the Merlin engine so it it was really cool to see these systems working well. SpaceX has also this week ignited Starhopper's new SN6 Raptor engine after being installed on Starhopper and that test seems to be largely successful. Originally it did seem that the full hop may be done on the 16th of July however there was an added delay until the next major test which was a more complete static fire. Later on of course we were shown some pretty amazing footage from Tim the everyday astronaut who was at the site live streaming the static fire. The initial static fire occurred and it all seemed to be A-OK. -okay. There was however a fair amount of residual fire a minute or two afterwards. Then as you all probably probably know by now the star hopper was suddenly engulfed in a bit of a fireball when the flames were being extinguished. Now as Tim mentioned there was no explosive sound that accompanied this fireball so to me this doesn't seem like a massive issue at all. Everything about the star hopper still looked intact. The initial thought of course was that this was certainly going to delay the actual hot flight for quite some time. So yes as far as anomalies go this one looked worse I think than it appeared but it probably is a fairly safe bet that some sort of leak started after the initial static fire. There was a lot of discussion going on at the time claiming that there had been a reasonably substantial cloud of methane fuel under the engine and that was then ignited when the flames were being extinguished. It's always interesting I think watching Twitter after such an incident with everyone amazed and shocked that a test of this nature did not go 100% to plan. I mean it's the entire point here right to rapidly prototype, test, refine and repeat this process. 
This is what makes SpaceX unique, and this is why the rapid pace of innovation is possible to this degree. So shortly after all the excitement, we started to see tweets such as this, saying that the static fire was a good five second fire, the methane discharged, ignited, the hopper detanked and powered down fine, and that the star hopper essentially was looking totally okay this morning. So SpaceX still seems to have a little more work to do before the vehicle is ready for its first untethered flight. As much as we want to see this baby fly, we also want to see SpaceX do everything possible to reduce the likelihood of Starhopper being destroyed. Hopefully it isn't going to be too much longer before we see some more substantial untethered hops taking place, but it has been quite the exciting week watching some of these initial tests taking place. For those of you wanting to know a little more about the upcoming hop tests themselves, Elon Musk tweeted out on the 12th of July saying that the initial test should hop around 20 meters up and sideways, and the next iteration of Starship will hopefully climb to around 20 kilometers in altitude in a few months' time. This is going to be pretty awesome to watch. If you remember back five years ago, the Grasshopper and Falcon 9 test vehicles only really hopped up to around a kilometer maximum in altitude. These Starhopper tests and future Starship tests are going to raise this to a whole new level. I think it's going to be quite interesting as we should start to see some tests evolve with some real re-entry heat going on. The stainless steel body is something I've been super interested about ever since it was first announced. In fact, one of the questions I get asked repeatedly is in regards to the shift to the new stainless steel design and whether I believe it's going to work. Now, I feel like this has been covered a lot already, but there still seems to be a great deal of confusion, I guess, as to why SpaceX have chosen a stainless steel body over the previous designs that incorporated carbon composites. As mentioned in a discussion recently, Elon Musk said the thing that's counterintuitive about the stainless steel is that it's obviously cheap, it's obviously fast, but it's not obviously the lightest. But it actually is the lightest. If you look at the properties of a high quality stainless steel, the thing that isn't obvious is that at cryogenic temperatures, the strength is boosted by around 50%. Most steels, as you get to cryogenic temperatures, become very brittle, and that's true of most steels but not of stainless steel that has a high chrome nickel content. That actually increases in strength. Now along with this, the stainless steel is terrific at transferring heat throughout the body of the vessel, so it can be actively cooled with cryogenic fuels rather than needing massive amounts of heat shielding across the surface facing the atmosphere on re-entry. I've been eagerly awaiting more information around the cooling of the ship as we haven't had a huge amount of detail on that yet. Now hopefully we are going to hear a little more over the next month or so as Elon has been teasing an event to cover more on this topic. Um, also we did spot another interesting tweet from Elon saying that the estimated payload to orbit for Starship seems to sit around the 100 to 125 ton mark with a true useful load to a useful orbit including propellant reserves. But then he did add that this equates to 150 tons for reference payload compared to other rockets. So presumably for low Earth orbit missions, a payload between 100 and 150 tons is still to be expected. And all of this is of course assuming a fully reusable configuration. This is super impressive when compared to the fully expendable space launch system, which last I heard will have a payload capability of around the 130 ton to low Earth orbit mark. So from the footage at the Florida worksite, you can really start to get a picture here for the effort going on. The shipping container here looks to be what took most of the damage from the uh, recent fire at the site. Uh, we can even see workers here cleaning up after that incident. We can also see a bunch of activity going on within this white tent area here, and a number of new stainless steel ring sections are underway as well. At the same time we see everything here at Florida evolving, SpaceX has been building a similar orbital Starship prototype as well, preparing the smaller Starhopper vessel at its Boca Chica site. As most of us know, there is a bit of a competition now going on between the two sites, 
essentially in order to see who can build the better orbital starship as fast as possible. Both sites are essentially rapidly developing and prototyping the best ways to work with the new stainless steel materials and get these vessels off the ground as soon as possible. Now over the last few weeks in particular we've seen a bunch of new steel sections added to the starship at Boca Chica and this almost to me looks to have doubled the height of it. Now we are of course all awaiting some more up to date information on the latest designs for the Starship itself. We know uh, from quite a while back from an Elon tweet that plans have changed specifically around the fins and the legs. Now currently it seems that we will start to hear a little more about this after the first successful hop of the Starhopper. We're all hoping that this is going to be live streamed with some nice high quality footage from cameras around the launch pad. Uh, so fingers crossed we're getting quite close to that point now. We have had another tweet more recently from Elon saying that the Starhopper again is perfectly fine. Uh, it's not bothered at all by that little bit of heat that we saw there earlier. And essentially there we can see that the plan is still probably to do this hover test next week. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you for watching. Please do take a second to like and share. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them down in the comments below. As always, a massive thank you to my very awesome quality control squad listed here. If you are interested in these topics as well and would like to help out, please do follow my Discord link in the description and join us all in there. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my compilation video of SpaceX's achievements over the last decade or so. It sure has been an amazing ride watching all this. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.